New Hope TV, your encounter with God. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the ruling cities of Judah, for a ruler will come from you who will be the... What was the description about this ruler? That not that he will be a great fighter, not that he will be a great musician, not that he will be a great miracle worker. What was the description about this ruler? This ruler who is going to come he is going to be a shepherd for my people Israel. No wonder shepherds went to see him. There are so many other people, uh, you know, so many other occupations that were prevalent at that time. But who went to see him? The shepherds went to see him. Why? Because the declaration was the greatest shepherd of all time is here. There is there's absolutely no need for me to tell you who that is. Amen? Amen. Let's read John chapter 10 and verse 11. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd the good shepherd sacrifices his life for the sheep he's not saying i'm the shepherd what is he saying i am the i am the come on loudly i am the good shepherd because there are many shepherds who would who would not do that you know ordinary shepherds would not lay down their life for the sheep come on Whose life is more important? Like when you go, when, when, you know, in, when there is an emergency in the hospital between the mother and the baby, what does a doctor normally ask you to do? Save the mother. Don't look for the baby, you know. You will get another baby later. But you, the priority is to save the mother. Nobody would say, just save my baby, let me pass away. I mean, normally they wouldn't say this. And that is why it is ordinary, expected, natural result for us to know that shepherds, on natural basis, they would not lay down their life for a sheep. Because in two days, they can make a new sheep. They can, you know, get the sheep that they already have to procreate and, 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 and have a new sheep. But Jesus said, wait, I'm not an ordinary shepherd. I am the good shepherd. Why am I the good shepherd? Because I lay down my life. I sacrifice my life for the sheep. That is why I am good. That is why you can depend on me. That is why when you walk with me, you will never fail. That is why, you know, I'm, I'm going to go out of my way. Jesus said there was this hundred sheep and one was wandering away. Jesus said, I, the good shepherd, what would I do? I would leave the 99, okay, good sheep and go running after the one lost sheep that's why we are in church this morning because he came running after us he came when the lion had taken us in his arms and was running away with us he didn't say oh one sheep i'll make more sheep no no no. what did he do like david went after that lion and the bear jesus ran after the enemy to the extent that he had to lay down his life on the cross he actually sacrificed his life on the cross. Why? So that we can be liberated. So that we can be broke. So that we can break out of the clutches of the enemy. So that he can break the teeth of the enemy. The enemy is no longer powerful enough to devour us. Why? Because Jesus, he, with his sacrifice on the cross, he defeated this enemy once and for all. Isn't he a good shepherd? What does the Bible say? It says the sheep, they recognize his voice. How many sheep of Jesus do we have here this morning? Let me tell you, let me tell you how to identify yourself as a sheep. You will recognize the voice of your shepherd. Amen? Amen. It's not very easy to mislead a sheep. You know, because... The sheep really knows who is her, his or her real shepherd. And what do they do? They recognize their voice. There are many sheep who recognize his voice. But his sheep will come to him when he calls them by their 
name. Can you see a personal relationship here? You know, they, they, they are not, you know, the, the sheep, the shepherd is not coming and saying, okay, all hundred of you sheep, come follow me. Let's go have some good food. What does the shepherd say? You, Rupal sheep. You, Parto sheep, you come, you come. You, Rinky, you come. He's calling everyone out by their name. And he's saying, you know what? Come, come, let me take you. Let me take you. And the Bible says, those who recognize his voice, they will come to him. He will lead them out to wherever he wants to take them. The Bible says, after he has gathered his own flock, he, what does he do? He walks ahead of them. This shepherd, he, he doesn't say, okay, go, 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 try, take a risk and see if you fall into a ditch. If you fall into a ditch, I will rescue you. No. He says, I will walk ahead of you. He's saying, this good shepherd, he, he gathers his flock and then he walks ahead so that they can follow him because they know his word. See, it, nowhere does it say that they will see the shepherd. Did you see that? Nowhere does it say that the sheep will see the shepherd and follow him. What does it say? They will hear his voice and follow him. Today, you know, the pursuit is always about, oh, I want to see a vision or I want to see a miracle. I want to see something. No, no, no. You hear his voice. How do you hear his voice? In his word. You know, when you pray, the Holy Spirit will begin to speak to you and will bring you his voice. Not always do you have to see him, but you always and always have to hear him. If you don't hear him, you don't, you don't have a relationship with him. You need to hear him on a daily basis. See, for, for two days, let's say that we are walking with David, the shepherd. We are David's sheep and we're walking with David, the shepherd for two days. And for two days, we have not heard the voice of the shepherd. Probably we joined the wrong flock. You know, somewhere down the line, we took a wrong direction. And, and, and if, you know, if David is not still giving directions, probably something went wrong. It is essential for you to follow and hear his voice. That's why the Bible says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. When you wake up every morning, just say, shepherd of my soul. Will you give me some fresh direction for today? Will you lead me? Will you walk ahead of me? I want to hear your voice. I want to recognize your voice and follow and come after you. I don't want to just follow some man. I don't want to follow everything that my church is doing. I don't want to be you know, caught up in the, in, in the culture that I live in. I want to follow my good shepherd. Amen? The Bible says, I am the good. This is Jesus speaking, okay? I am the good shepherd. I know my own sheep and they know me. It's very simple. If you are the sheep of Jesus, you know who Jesus is. I don't need to convince you about his existence. I don't need to convince you that, you know, Jesus really died for you. I don't need to convince you that Jesus loves you. You know, I don't, you, would, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't ask, you know, unreasonable questions. If you are not his sheep, let's say that you have not come to a place where you really believe in Jesus and you follow, then there is space for me to convince you there is space for me to discuss with you and explain to you how much, where all you can believe. But if you're already his sheep, what does the Bible say? I know them and they know me. It's a, it's a mutual relationship. It's not a Jesus knows me and I don't know him relationship. It's not a I know him but he doesn't know me relationship. It's a, you know, two-way relationship. You know those, uh, you know, in those young days when somebody would ask, you know, uh, do you like somebody? You would say, yes, I like, like that person, but it's a one-way traffic, you know, it's not a two-way traffic. Uh, it's, uh, I don't think that person likes me back. I, it's just me liking that person. And, and that's not the relationship, that's not a real relationship. You know, by now, we know that that's, you're not in a relationship with that person unless it's both ways. And here the Bible says, that is what the good shepherd is offering us. He says, they know me and I know them. 
let's, let's move into the implication. Now that Jesus is the good shepherd, what does he expect from us? What does he want us to do? Jesus says, but I have other sheep too. That are? Come on, loudly. I have other sheep too that are not in this sheepfold. I must bring them also. How will they, I bring them? They will listen to my voice and there will be one flock with one shepherd. Let me tell you something. There are other sheep who are not in church this morning. There are other sheep who are not able to make it here this morning. But they are his sheep. He has recognized them. He knows where they are. You know what is your responsibility and my responsibility? To be his voice. When we go out of here, your task is not to be your own voice. Your task is to be his voice. So that when people, when his sheep hears his voice, they will begin to follow him. Your task and my task is to be his voice. Isn't that beautiful? When we walk out of here, we are like, God, that's not it. I know that there were some 50, 60 people in church today, but I, I, I'm 100% sure that there are more sheep outside who, who, are, who are really yours, but they have not reached the sheepfold yet. And my task is to go and take the voice of Jesus to them, to such an extent that they will begin to see and hear and experience Jesus the same way that you and I experience Jesus. The book of Acts chapter 20 and verse 28, the Bible says, so guard yourselves and guard yourselves and God's people feed and shepherd God's flock, his church, purchased with his own blood, over which the Holy Spirit has appointed you as leaders. What is God saying? God is saying, yes, Jesus is the chief shepherd. Jesus is the good shepherd. But church, guess what? Guess what? I have appointed many of you as, not many of you, I have appointed all of you as Leaders, the Holy Spirit, it, not the pastor, but the Holy Spirit has appointed you as leaders. And, and what, what does the Bible say? What do you need to do? You need to guard yourself and you need to guard God's people. In other words, David, his responsibility was not only to guard himself. Did you see the two things he did? He protected the lamb and he also protected himself why because Jesus has already paid the price we don't have to die for the sake of the sheep Jesus is the one who died for the sake of the sheep all that we need to do is we need to guard the people that God has placed around us we need to watch over their lives we need to feed them and we need to shepherd them and we need to be their leaders and when Jesus left the world Jesus said go and make disciples all over the nations wherever you go teach them baptize them teach them to obey the word of God what is that that is leading feeding and shepherding God's people that is the task that God has given us why because he is the chief shepherd he is the good shepherd and he expects us to do the same thing Jesus the, what Jesus was calling us to do was prophesied in the Old Testament Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15 see there are some places where it speaks about the only shepherd that is Jesus but here it is not singular it is plural let's read it what does it say I will give you shepherds. loudly I will give you shepherds, shepherds after my own heart who will guide you with knowledge and understanding can we pray this prayer this morning God make me a shepherd after the heart of God make me a leader after the heart of God who will guide people around me with wisdom and understanding don't always look to the pastor don't always don't wait to just say oh the pastor is the shepherd and we are all the sheep that's a very stupid decision no the bible says every one of us have been appointed and called for a ministry has been called for a task amen, amen. let's read this verse it's in ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 11 can we read it together? This is for the sake of all the sheep who are listening to the shepherds, okay? The words of the wise are like, loudly, they are like cattle prods, painful but 
helpful. Their collected sayings are like nail studded stick with which a shepherd drives the sheep. Uh oh. The shepherd has a stick. Okay, the stick has, it's not a smooth stick. What does the, ship, what does the stick have? Nails on them. Sometimes the stick falls on the sheep. It is not meant to kill the sheep. What is it meant to do? It is meant to help the sheep. What does it say? They are painful, but... Everybody say it loudly. Painful. Once again, loudly. We, this, this, is the, this is the difficult part where we don't like receiving this part, right? We like the good shepherd part. We like the, all the other part, but we don't like the painful part. So let's, let's read. This is the word of God. I'm not telling you uh, what I like to teach you. I'm telling you what's in the Bible. It says these words, they will be sometimes painful but helpful. But when we are ready to receive it, it will help us. Amen? So sometimes when you come to me for help or you come to me for counseling, I may tell you to do some very difficult things. I'm, I'm setting you up for this, okay? I'm setting you up because, see, if you are expecting wisdom and guidance, you will need to sometimes use the stick. The Bible says, what father loves his children but does not discipline them? What father loves his son and daughter but does not correct them? You can expect that from your shepherds. You should do the same thing to your sheep, to the people that you're leading over. You have all the rights, not in a hurtful way, not in a, uh, in a very uh, you know, condemning way, but you have all the rights to use God's word and correct the people that God has placed you over. Amen? You know, we live in this world where we want to be politically correct. We don't want to condemn anybody. We want to, you know, talk as smooth as possible so that people don't dislike me, so that I don't lose the value. But if you look at Jesus' teachings, you know, Jesus never sugarcoated his words. Jesus called them, hey, you brood of vipers. You are children of the devil. Come on, if Jesus was preaching in, you know, other churches, he would never get invited back into the church. You know that if, if you preach those kind of sermons now, you will never get invited, especially not into a, a church that goes live on television or, or on Facebook. It'll, be, it'll, be, it'll create controversies. But Jesus never stopped from correcting the people that God had placed under him. I'm not saying you go around calling names. I'm saying you have all the right to use the stick at the right time. And... You have, you, you have all the reasons to submit to the stick. Sometimes when it comes your way, just say yes. This is painful, but it is helpful. Some of you, you need to take a printout of this verse and go put it up in your, in your desks. And I, I think I should print it out and I keep it on the, on the counseling table inside. When you come and uh, you know, sit and talk to me, it will really help you to know that when I say something to pain you, it's, it's also to help you. Amen. You know, I'll tell you something about the spirit of Egyptians. The Bible says in Genesis 46 verse 34, the Egyptians, they used to despise shepherds. You know, the, the spirit of Egyptians don't like shepherds. If there is a spirit that is causing you to rebel against your pastors, that is causing you to talk against your leaders, that is causing you to talk against the people that God has placed over you. It may be as simple as your parents or it may be your pastor or anybody that God has divinely placed over your life. Can I tell you where that spirit is coming from? That is the spirit of Egyptian. That's a spirit from Egypt. The Bible says the Egyptians, they despise the shepherds. They, they don't like, they don't respect the leaders. They don't like accountability. They don't like submission. They don't like, uh, you know, these painful sticks that are being used. So they, they it's the spirit of Egypt that, that causes people to rebel. And, and through the Bible, you know, you would find these rebellious kids. David had one of them. Any, any guesses? Absalom. David had a rebellious son whom David loved with all his heart. You know what he did? He proclaimed himself king, slept with his father's wife, made a big mess out of the thing, went into the battle trying to kill David. What happened? He was influenced by the spirit of Egypt. 
he was influenced by this Egyptian spirit that disrespected the authority that God has placed over his life. And he lost his life. He lost everything that God had blessed him with. He lost it because of his rebellion. Can we make a decision? Can we tell, when we walk out of this place, we're saying, I have to be submissive to the big chief shepherd, but I also have to be submissive to the shepherds that God has placed over my life. No more of rebellion. No more of being influenced by the spirit of Egyptians. Amen. The Bible says in 1 Peter 2 verse 25, read it with me. Once you were like sheep who wandered, but now you have turned to your shepherd. Who is the shepherd? The shepherd is the guardian of your souls. And then he goes on to say in 1 Peter 5 verse 4, and when the loudly and when the great shepherd appears you will receive a crown of of never ending glory and honor and then he goes on to say in the book of revelation chapter 7 and verse 17 for the lamb on the throne will be their shepherd he will lead them this is speaking about eternity all eternity long who will be our shepherd the lamb on the throne will be their shepherd he will lead them to springs of life giving water and what will he do he will wipe away every tear from their eyes can you imagine can you can you imagine a shepherd being concerned about the tears of its sheep that's the shepherd that we serve you know there are some things that we got to pray today you know we're going to pray you know in psalm 28 verse 19 god save your people bless israel your special possession lead them like a shepherd and Carry them in your arms forever. I'm, I'm going to email you this. I'm going to put this on the church WhatsApp group. If you're not on the church WhatsApp group, speak to one of the leaders and make sure you're added on the church WhatsApp group. I'll share this, this entire PDF. These are things you need to pray this week, okay? Psalm 28 verse 19, loudly together. Save your people. Bless Israel, your special possession. Lead them like a shepherd and carry them in your arms forever. Psalm 80 verse 1. Please listen, O shepherd of let's 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 redo it. Let's say O shepherd of Bangalore. Can we do that? Please listen, O shepherd of Bangalore, you who lead India's descendants like a flock. O oh God, enthroned above the cherubim, why don't you display your radiant glory? You know, there was somebody that God displayed his glory to. And this is what God said. He said that the, the Lord, his glory, he will go ahead of you and he will also protect you from? When I was in Orissa is when I saw this thing of, of shepherds taking sheep from one place to the other. I don't know if you have noticed, two, one, there will be two or three shepherds. One shepherd will walk in the start, at the, at the beginning of it. One shepherd will stay at the end and one shepherd will stay by the side. And, and they protect the sheep from all sides and God promises the same he is our shepherd he's saying you know what I'm not just the shepherd who will go before you I'm also the shepherd that is going to protect you from behind amen, amen. these are all promised verses over our lives I I I'm sure you all remember Psalm 23 what is in Psalm 23? Let's, let's just stand up and let's declare this together, okay? I'm sure you can read this from the screens or if you know it memorized, you can say it out as, uh, as, as, as it comes to your spirit. Just, you know, if you cannot read it, just, just say it out from your Bibles. Ready? One, two, three, go. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. Even when I walk through the 
darkest valley, I will not be afraid for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff, it protects and it comforts me. Not only that, you will prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. And then he says, surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life. And I will live in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. 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 You know, I, this is what I want you to envision. You know, when you and I were running away from God, when you and I were running away from a relationship with God, who pursued us? His goodness and His unfailing love. It went out of the way, left the 99 sheep there and left, went out of the way to pursue you where you are. All eyes closed. Can we just, I, I know that some of you might actually be in the wilderness right now, might actually be lost at the moment and, and might actually be in a place where you don't have any direction. Can you just ask this good shepherd to just come and give you some direction right now as you pray? Right now as you seek him, just say, Lord, walk ahead of me and walk right behind me. Carry me in your arms like you would do. Lead me, speak to me, call my name and speak to me. Dictate your heart to me so that I may be able to follow you all the days of my life. Daddy God, we just surrender our hearts. We know that our hearts are prone to wander. We know that our hearts are prone to go away from you. But your goodness and your unfailing love, it will pursue me all the days of my life. And, I, and that is what will bring me back into the house of the Lord. And I will live in the house of the Lord for all the days of my life. Because the Lord my God, because my Jesus is my good shepherd. And right now, as a shepherd in this house, I declare this voice over every heart that is wandering. I declare this voice over every soul that is lost. I declare this voice over every believer in this house that is wandering without direction. I declare, let the voice of God become clear and loud and available to your children in this season, God. Let them hear your voice. Let them know who you are. Let them know you personally and let them walk with you personally, Daddy. Oh, we love you and we love you from the bottom of our hearts. All the days of our life, we want to follow the shepherd of our souls. We give you the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. 